Here's my interview with director Kim Albright about With Love and a Major Organ, now playing. So, uh, how did uh, With Love and a Major Organ come about? So, um, okay, well, it all started in 2017. I had been living in the UK and I was returning back home to Canada. And I spoke to Anna McGuire, who plays Annabelle. Um, she splits her time a lot between Canada and the UK. And I said, um, okay, so I'm coming back home. Um, I don't know anyone in Canada in the film world. Are there any um, writers, creatives, you know, anyone you think I might connect with um, that you could introduce me to? And she was working with Julia at the time on a short film together, which Anna was directing and Julia was writing. And uh, yeah, so she actually introduced us and that was back in 2017. And then uh, with Love and a Major Organ, the play uh, had been out in the world for about five years or so playing in Canada and the States. And so Julia mentioned this project to me and, um, and then I had read the play script and thought, okay, yeah, I, I really think there's potential here to turn this into a film um and then that was the beginning that was the starting conversation and then it's around that time that uh, my producer Madeline Davis joined the group as well and my, so myself Julia Anna um and Madeline were a team of four basically developing the project for a good sort of four years or so and during COVID and all this so yeah our team was formed early days um and we, we stuck at it <laughs> So uh, how does the uh, film differ from the play? There's quite a number of things. So first off, the play has three characters. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously the film has a ton more. So uh, Julia and, and the rest of us really had to think on how to grow the, the world of, of the, grow the story. Um, and so it was, it was, it had, it had evolved in terms of numbers and cast and locations. And, um, and also, you know, where else could Annabelle go apart from home and, and you know, where she meets George. And so we thought about her workplace and what that would look like and how it would feel. And same for George, his workplace. So it, it basically grew. Um, but also, I would say the tone is is different. I'd say the film is darker. Um, and um, And we also had to think on how to tell the story in a very visual way, appropriate for the screen, as opposed to, you know, uh, theater relies a lot more on dialogue and exposition. So, and, and film is sort of, you know, tries to, oh, I think, I think the stuff I like the most uh, tends to sort of not have as very much of that at all. So um, yeah, we had to think long and hard about how to, how to show and rather than tell. Um, those are the main things I would say, the main differences between the two. So where did the idea come from of like having people like remove their hearts, but their the hearts are like everyday objects like a mm -hmm. hermit crab or paper? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's all Julia actually. So in the play, interestingly though, in the play, Annabelle's heart is a fleshy beating heart, a normal yeah. kind of organ. And but George's uh was replaced with paper. So I think that's kind of where this is sort of stemmed from that, really. I think the fact that like the, the play kind of lived in in a bit of in two worlds, like real hearts, but also not real hearts. And then Julia, I think, took that idea and ran with it. And I remember it was probably a couple years into developing the script that, that she thought of this idea. And we really loved it. My producer and I were like, oh, this is amazing. It sort of sets the tone. It, it sort of, you know, sets up the world perfectly, um, you know, right, right off the bat. And um, I think Julia was maybe a little, little unsure still. And I think the next draft, she had taken it away. We said, no, we've got it. That's like such an awesome idea. We've got to put that back in. And then eventually it came back in. Um, but yeah, that's 100% Julia. Full mm -hmm. credit to her for thinking that up. Yeah, so... I think like one of the major themes of the film is like uh, how we lack interpersonal connections and like everyone is using this social media app, uh, Life Zap, to totally. control their lives. So um, what do you think the film says about this lack of interpersonal connection and reliance on social media? Well, you know what? I hate to say this, but I think... You know, when the, when the, when the when the script was written, it was many years ago. When um, I think this sort of reliance, dependence, obsession with social media was 
probably not quite at its height yet. And now I feel like it's just so commonplace. It's just what everyone does. It's, it's sort of really taken over our lives. And so I feel like, you know, give it another five years and, and we will have maybe moved on to something else. Who knows? But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it definitely makes a statement. I mean, my hope was that it, it sort of pokes fun of our relationship, you know, with technology and how it's it's just become sort of an obsession um, and, and how, you know, to the point where we're just not comfortable having face-to-face -face conversations. Uh, and so, you know, it's funny because I feel like when, when Julia thought of that and we were talking about it, we thought, you know, it's, it was only just the beginning in our day-to-day -day lives, but I think also because of COVID, when we spent so much time on our own and probably using social media more than ever, because it was one way we could really connect with people that weren't, you know, in our, in our bubble, it really sort of took over. And I feel like it's, it's not, it's, it's like such a part of, of our lives now. Um, so yeah, sadly it was, it was something we were hoping to make fun of and in hopes I think of it you know, we weren't, we're not there really. It's not, that's not really to the extent that our relationship with technology is going to be, but I, I think um, we're there. We're, we're past that point now, actually. Uh, I wonder if you could talk a bit about that casting of the film and how important ca chemistry was between the characters. Yeah, it was extremely important to me. And casting was extremely important to me. I, um, I came into this film uh, really feeling comfortable in many other departments of, of filmmaking, such as the visuals. I, I felt like it was just something that came natural to me back when I was making short films and commercials and, but directing actors was something, and maybe because of COVID too, you know, we all sort of spent a good couple of years, um, not, you know, I, 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 I hadn't shot anything in those in that time. And I felt I really needed to sort of, um, brush up on my directing skills. And I was, I was very determined on this, on this film to make sure the performances were that I did everything I could to make sure the performances were, were as good as possible. And so Anna, I knew Anna was, was going to play Annabelle right from the start, right from our early conversations. I had worked with her before on a short film and saw what, saw what she was capable of, saw her talent. And I just felt, you know what? She is perfect for Annabelle. Um, I knew she could pull it off. And I just saw through having worked with her, I saw her work ethic and how devoted and committed she is to the role and how much research she puts into it. And so, so that was a given. And then um, with all the others, you know, I made a point of, um, casting comedic actors. And I spoke with our casting directors. I said, you know, any comedic background, you know, that's so important to me. And I, I did definitely keep an eye out for that um, in our casting process. Um, Hamza was interesting because he came in, he, he, I only saw his tape kind of at the 11th hour. And I remember his name um, was in the mix, but then he was an actor that was, it was going to be off for only. So meaning that I couldn't audition him. And so I just thought that was too risky. So I just said, no, you know, like, let's not even consider him. Um, and, uh, and then he sent in a tape. It was totally unprompted, but he sent in a tape. It was right at the very end of the casting process. And I watched it and I thought, oh, okay, well, because I, I thought, you know, I, I I was like, okay, I think I kind of have settled on who might be George. Then I saw his tape and it just blew me away. It was, it was a different take on George that I hadn't expected and I hadn't anticipated. And it really, it really, um, I just couldn't look away basically. And then, and then I thought, okay, well, this is really interesting. Let's throw Hamza into the mix. And we have one more um, session of, of chemistry reads with Anna, with a couple of potential Georges. And then, so Hamza was in the mix then. And I think after that chemistry read with Anna, that was it. I just knew right then and there that he had to play George. I saw how they um, uh, how they were so, they, they sort of brought each other to life in the chemistry read. And this was on Zoom, mind you, like two, two screens on a laptop, they were communicating on a laptop as well. Like it just, but it was so, it was so alive and real and he really, they kept each other on their toes. And so, you know, I, I guess I saw that and Anna having worked with her before, I, I saw that she, she had been like stimulated here. Um, and then that was it. I just knew immediately that, that Hamza had to play George. Um, and then Vina was a no brainer. So Vina plays the mom. And for me, she was a no brainer as well. Um, 
first off, they needed to look related. And I thought that worked. And, uh, and again, her, her, in her, in her audition, her, her comedy was just spot on and her vulnerability and softness. Like it was just, she just sort of struck the perfect balance for this character. So I think, uh, talk a bit more about the character of Annabelle and I, I don't want to give too much away, but like, like how the character becomes less optimistic as the film progresses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, the, the the midpoint where, I mean, I'll give this bit away. I think <laughs> it's okay. Where she rips out her heart. Um, I love this turning point. I, and I, I really think Annabelle without a heart is a very fascinating character because she kind of plateaus for a little bit. And then it's the slow degradation, of, you know, as time goes on without a heart. And I remember um, when we were fleshing out these scenes together, Anna, Anna and I, and we talked a lot about how, um, you know, Annabelle's gradual descent into kind of lifelessness uh, and, you know, how, it, how it's this slow progression. Um, and I, I, uh, I love it. Like I, I'm, I'm, I could, I could watch a whole film of this character without a heart because I, 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 I feel like she sort of, totally encapsulates you know kind of what we wish we how we wish we could act <laughs> sometimes you know just saying things totally I mean there's no there's no sugar coating anything it's just complete blunt you know has total disregard for anyone's feelings and just comes out with whatever is on her mind and whatever she's thinking and and you know nine times out of ten it's probably harsh but who cares <laughs> it's just if that person deserves it and that's it so it was um it was super fun to explore this character. And I, I loved uh, watching, you know, like in the edit edit process, kind of seeing this character slowly evolve and, and descend into kind of, you know, kind of almost a corpse towards the end. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then the opposite happens with George. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, they just sort of like cross, like, you yeah, totally kind of go in total opposite directions. And yeah, George is like living his best life and you know sort of straddling a, a child and a teenager and and battling with like what the heck is going on with him and that was super fun too to to witness on set um because the the scene where he's having dinner with his mom and I remember talking about the scene with Hamza and how you know he's sort of he's sort of drawn between like the old George but also pulled in the direction of like this teenage teenage angst and how you know he kind of doesn't know where he belongs and it's just so honest and, and heartfelt and genuine and confused the sort of confusion that's taken over him um yeah those are very fun characters to observe after the midpoint for sure so uh what would you say is the ultimate message of with love and a major organ oh gosh there are so many i mean I think ultimately it looks at how we connect with one another, like we were saying before. And, um, you know, and Annabelle is so brave and so courageous and, you know, she rips out her heart. And I, I feel like nowadays, I don't know, I feel like um, we we bury our emotions, we bury, we're, we're, we're afraid to communicate. And so, you know, I hope, I hope this, the film kind of offers some light into into how we communicate and how we love and 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 you know to be bold and courageous i mean it's not i don't want it to be preachy in any way but i think just by observing how annabelle and george kind of function with or without a heart um and what they learn from one another and and sort of this empathy and and how they can understand the world better uh through having each other's heart and just sort of gain a different perspective um yeah, and and I think that's it. You know, if 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 an audience member can go away thinking about their relationships, what their heart is, how they communicate, how they love, um, is there a better way of going about it? You know, all these sort of things. Then then I'm 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 ha I'm happy if they can go away thinking that sort of stuff. Okay, that I'll do. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Well, thanks so much, Sean. Okay. All right. Take care. Okay.